Okay, we have a MacBook Pro. It's uh, 15 inches and uh, it's a uh, no power. I said there's no description here. Why is that? It's supposed to be a description that says. Okay, um, so this is a no power. This is an A1990. Um, the guy who did the booking didn't write the description. It's supposed to be a description here, but there's no description. Uh, uh, I don't. Okay, so as you guys know, because it's a no power device, we are not going to. Um, you can try to start the device. That's not a problem. You can try to start the device, uh, but it doesn't start. You don't. You don't have any feedback. But what, what we are what we are not going to do is to try to introduce power onto the machine because we are not sure what state the device is in. So the first thing we are going to do is, uh, as usual, we are going to take out the back cover and then uh, continue from there. We are using a P5 screwdriver for the back screws. Okay, screws are out. Now we want to I like to keep my screws at the at the back plate, so kind of everything that I take out, I put them there. So uh, in 1990, the first thing you do uh, in 1990, they are very. Uh, so before we we talk about that, let's disconnect the battery. Now in 1990, let's open up the board view. A common failure on A1990 it's uh, it's your C um, your C1981. Now C1981 it's on the, the the main power rail of your SSD voltage regulator, which is U90 uh, U9080. C1981 it uh, commonly fails, and then when it, fa it fails in two ways, sometimes it, it suffers an internal failure, which is the component it's shorted. And then it's, it, it shorts within itself. It doesn't affect U9080. Sometimes it does affect U9080. When that happens, uh, U9080, it's a buck converter. It's supposed to, um, uh, it, it, it's supposed to regulate 12.6 volt, which is your PP bus line, to output 2.5 volt on this here. It's supposed, it's supposed to get 2.5 volt out when uh, you have from 6 point, uh, uh, 6 point, uh, from 12.6 volt, you're supposed to get 2.5 volt. However, when this fails, what it will do is instead of sending 2.5 volt on its output, it will send out 12.6 volt, which will be way higher. And the 2.5, the 2.5 volt are supposed to go to your SSD. Now that will be way higher compared to what that line is supposed to receive. And then what happens is it damages uh, whatever is on that line, which in, the, in this case would then be the SSDs. So one of the ways you can tell if that has happened is this is U, U, U1980 is this chip here, this one. So if the, if the, the, the capacitor failed and also damaged U1980, you should see a bound to mark around here and also sometimes around uh, the chip itself. But we don't see that, which is a good thing. So nonetheless, we are now going to... And also with the A1990, when you get them in, the first thing you want to do is, uh, even with other machines, the first thing you want to do is to check for short, yes? Or the way we go about it is we, we will commonly check for short. Especially on the A1990, you want to check to see that you have a short on your PV bus because of C1981, because it's it's a common component that fails. I have gone through, I have gone through C1981 in my previous videos. So uh, you probably want to check out other videos on, on C1981. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do, because it's A1990, and because we know that uh, C1981 commonly fails on this one, is we are going to measure for a short on our PV bus. Now, a short on the PV bus, we are going to get on uh, these two components here, which are the fuses, uh, F7000 and F7001. 
and these two components are here they are, they are represented here these two these are the two components so we are going to use our multimeter in a continuity mode continuity mode black probe to ground and then our red probe and uh, we have a short so we are hoping that that is going to be by c9081 so let's quickly take the board out uh, we are going to start by using uh, now this is you see for example and a, a job like this one if you if you continue to, to continue to introduce power chances are that that capacitor may fail completely and then chances are that it will affect the 9080 which will then in turn affect uh, uh, the NAND so the repair when that happens the repair is possible I mean it can still be repaired but then there will be no files after the repair because you have to replace the NANDs even if it's just one of the NAND that fails you have to replace all of all of the NANDs. By NANDs, I'm talking about the, uh, the, the the drive. So, which is why it's not good uh, when you you are not sure what state a board is for you to uh, send power to it. See the screws of this are very similar to A1707, correct? Remember this screw here? Yeah, it's talking about the, the always have a different position because it has a little screw hole there or a screw up. I mean, the main way to hold it is. Yeah, but you saw what it does, yes? Because yeah. the screw has to go inside of it. Exactly. It has a screw hole. Hmm. My T4 is starting to worn out. Uh, this is actually T3. Let me see. Yeah, this is T3. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, let's see if I can find an actual T4 here. This is T5. Here you are. P5. Uh, T4, okay. Uh, T4 here. Uh, let's bring it down. Okay, I can just put this here. Now we need a T6. Screws are out. Next thing we want to start to do is to remove the cowlings and then uh, the battery screw as well. Now we can disconnect the cables. Is it touch ID? Yeah, this is your audio jack cable. That's your touch ID cable. So these ones from 15 to 16 always come with the full uh, charging uh, inputs, right? Say that again? From 15 to 16 inches always come with the full uh, charging inputs, like a charging port. Oh, you're talking about four charging ports? Yeah, that's the one they're selling. Yeah, all 15 inches will have uh, all 15 inches MacBook Pros will have four ports. Okay. <clears throat> Except the MacBook Air M1, uh, uh, M2, MacBook Air, 15 inches. Uh, 
and that will follow uh, that will follow a different design pattern. Okay, let's put this aside. So we are now going to flip the board to the other side, which is the, side, the, the area of uh, C9081. What board are we dealing with here? Why do we not see? Okay, let's see. C9081 is okay, and the C9081 is this side. Okay, so let's uh, flip the board to the other side like this. And um, this is, you see that? You see that? You see that bit of oxidation that? Yeah, that is why we have a short on the line. And that is caused by accumulation of dust. And then if the machine and then and a, a little bit of humidity will cause that to uh, start will cause that to, to fail. So what is happening now is uh, the capacitor is acting like a fuse, which is whatever it's on pin one is now equal to pin two. Ideally, the capacitor you should have uh, a capacitor you should have ground. You should have some insulation material here which separates uh, the ground from the main but right now when that fails whatever is on pin 2 becomes equal to pin 1 whatever is on pin 1 becomes equal to pin 2 which is which is exactly what is happening now there are two ways we fix this but uh, so uh, uh, one option is to remove that and replace it but then if you do so uh, down the line you are going to have the same issue this is, this is not this, the type of circuit that you can completely change. It's a circuit that will continue. After another two or, or, or so years, the same thing will happen. You have accumulation of dust in that, in, in that region. You have, it's a high voltage line. It's a 12.6 voltage line. Uh, so a bit of, uh, so uh, accumulation of dust and, 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 hum, and, a hum, and a humid environment will, will cause that to fail again. So what we then do is we we have started to not replace it. We just remove it and we don't replace it. Now, um, there are many that, the, the job that C9081 is doing, there are many other components that does it. So there's no harm if we do not put back C9081. Let's, uh, let's go to our board view. C9081. Okay, so let's type in C9081. Uh, what's happening? Let's just open it. Two zero dot zero one zero four one. Okay, here you go. C90. Now, this is a different page. Uh, 
Alistair Kelly. C ninety forty one, C ninety eighty one, ninety forty one. Okay, so this is uh, the caps. Uh, this is the, the, the caps in that line. We have C ninety C ninety seven three, C ninety seven four, C ninety eighty, C ninety eighty one. C ninety eighty one because of uh, the, the 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 region that is placed. That is why it always fails. So we are not going to replace C ninety eighty one for for the very purpose that um, that could. Um, Cause it to uh, to fail again, so we are going to remove it and not replace it. Now the others should do uh, just in, enough, and uh, we have been we have been doing that for as, as as a choice of repair for quite some time now, and we have not had any uh, any returns. Oh, and also with this type of repair, you don't need any type of sodium system. You can just use a tweezer to just do this, and then the capacitor is out of the board. And then let's say, let's now check to see if we still have a short. And as you can see, the short is gone. So at this stage, we are hoping that we now have a fully functioning board. So uh, it seems very simple, but uh, the process at which you go at it, and it's important not to introduce power to the board, otherwise you may end up killing uh, a board that would have ideally uh, be fixable. So now we are going to dust the board, and uh, we are hoping that this is a uh, this is uh, fixed. And you know, whenever you work on this ones, you always make sure. Just try to make sure you clean the inside of the machine. Important. Because um, dust does contribute to an issue like this one. Actually, it's a combination of that that causes uh, C981 to fail. And then another thing I want to mention: sometimes when you do, uh, is when you work um, at the at the region or the area of your SSD, usually what happens is the machine then boots into recovery mode. So you will start the machine, you will only get um, trackpad feedback, but the device will not post. So when you find yourself in that situation, do not be alarmed. You just need to. Uh, restore the device in DFU mode and you will be good to go. Now by restore it means you your client will have will then lose their data but that is I suppose that will be easy to bear compared to having to lose a machine. So sometimes when the repair is done, especially if you worked uh, by the area of your your SSD, uh, you may get a machine that just uh, is track right through but uh, no brain so in that situation you have to uh, re revive or restore the machine okay um, ideally what we would be doing is uh, first see if it works but uh, because we had a short before and now with the cap out of the line we no longer have a short we are pretty confident that this is uh, most likely uh, fixed to be easy enough so we are doing what we would ordinarily not do which is to put the board together before testing it so but then we just hope that uh, the, the, the repair was successful so we just 
and the screws. Uh, okay, it's fine. I'm, not, I'm almost done now. Is it calling the WhatsApp or direct call? Uh, it's more, more How many times has it called now? Uh, I'm going to reach out to him. Let me get uh, this T4, T3, I see most of the, the screws are responding better on the T. It's interesting, we didn't even test it, we just go in ahead to yeah, put the device together. Yeah, but, but what if it doesn't work? There is also a possibility of it not working. We hope it works, so we don't have to remove the machine, uh, uh, remove the board all over again. Okay, we're almost done here. We are going to test and we hope that we have a working board.
to the call again. I believe that's uh, the last one from the inside. Okay, that's the last one. Now we need to plug back the battery. battery cover now the back screws I hope they're complete so the longest ones will obviously Go into the hinges. There are two long ones, and then the other four are equal. The two long ones are equal as well. The machine that's been connected. Don't forget to change the system. To change it in the system way to say. Collected, completed, and collected. Yeah. Okay, that's the last one. Okay. The moment we see if we have to open up the device again or okay do we have a working machine and we have to open up the device again do you have trackpad feedback yes we do at least we're getting a bit of life we have a uh, apple logo and that's a beautiful apple logo and then as you guys know we don't really want the device to boot so uh, that, that it is for us. Uh, thank you guys for taking your time. I will see you guys in the next one.